today's video I'm going to show you some essential tips on how to plaster like a pro. Now let's look at the situation we've got here. We've got a thick stipple looking wall, it's a bit porous, it's pretty horrible to be working with so we've got to scrape it all back. We've got different areas going to be lower than others, we've generally got quite a troubled situation so we're going to PVA it, a nice thick coat of 3 to one 3 parts water, 1 part PVA. PVA the whole background, mix up the plaster and then we're going to show you some essential tips on how to plaster like a pro. Okay, so this is what we're left with. Still got a bit of texture on the walls, so you want a relatively thick mix. And what we're going to do, like we said, is put a nice thick coat on. So, starting from the left. I'm just going to try and sail over any bumps that are left behind. And don't worry too much about getting it flat, we're going to use a speed skin, but for now, whack a nice coat on and what I'm doing is using the same mix for both coats. It's quite warm, even though we're just in spring, it's still quite a warm day with the sun out, so it should be a good way of doing it. scratch it then if you don't have a thick mix or a thick first coat you're not going to sail over the initial bumps that are left behind so like I said I'm scared to whack it on thick. When you're applying the plaster try and go both ways so we've started horizontally apply vertically as well this means you're just going to get it flat both ways and all around you're going to get a flatter wall. The first coat's on nice and thick I'm going to use a speed skin this is a great way of getting your wall flat before you apply a second coat it really helps you find a general level on what something to work with. So, horizontally first. Both ways. And you're gonna come right up vertically. Now, not only is it fast, but it helps you fill in any areas that are a bit low. So where that section was, where we pulled it back to the plasterboard, it's really going to give it a good level to play from. So what I'm going to do now is with the mitts, go straight over. Now generally if this was thick hard tech, you'd want to wait for the first coat to go off. But because I've scraped it quite low and it's not even hard tech to begin with, we're good just to sail around and carry on. So I'm going to flatten the rest of the walls and then second coat. Now we're applying the second coat. And the important thing to think is uh, we've added a lot of thickness to the first coat to get over the um, over the texture. And like I said, it's not actually our text, it's been tested, so it's all safe on that front. But the second coat is just a top up. Now generally a lot of people have a lot of questions saying how do you know how thick the second coat wants to be? It roughly wants to be half the thickness. Now you don't have to be specific about this, you don't need to get a ruler and check. <laughs> it's 100% half, but generally speaking, the second coat doesn't need to be as thick as the first. And that's just because a lot of the thickness has been added. And if you add too much thickness on your second coat, it can also pull and you can get a bit of moisture trapped out between the coats, which can create bubbling, which can be a nightmare. So again, general rule of thumb, half amount for top coat. Quickly show you the space situation here. So we've got this wall, yeah, cool. And then we've got this big pine thing. And then we come around here, and we've got this little freezer. So I've been trying to squeeze it in between that. So we go through there, side on. Got another big block. So yeah, access isn't great here. <laughs> I'm going to flatten the second coat. Now, I know the first coat uses speed skin. But the second coat, if I'm using the same mix, I tend to avoid it. Now, here's why. If you use a speed skin when it's a bit tougher, sometimes the speed skin can leave some ripples in your second coat. Now, if you're not getting on top of that too fast, then them ripples will stay and it'll show through. So, the rule of thumb is, if your first or second coat is still quite wet, feel free to use a speed skin. But if it's taken up and it's quite firm then avoid it in my opinion because like I say if you get towards the later stages then them ripples might still show through so because I've used the same mix because it's firmed up 
and it's not as wet as say the first coat, I'm just going to use a trowel. So, and it, it's still good to trowel up, I don't really need any water at the moment, but if you've got a bit of resistance and use water at the edges, I've often found that plasterers are asking when should you use water. Just use water when you can feel a bit of a pull against your trowel. When the plaster's fighting and it doesn't feel smooth, use water just to lubricate the edges. That's the best way to explain it. Use water when there's resistance. At the moment, that feels pretty good. So, we're all right. Now, a good little trick when you're flattening is not only to go horizontal, but go vertical, like I said about application, but when you're coming up, slightly bend your trowel at the top, and then come back down. And then what you're doing is you're tilting it to the right, gently pulling off and then coming back on yourself. And that way you don't have to stop, you can just keep going. And what I'm doing is using my knuckles at the back edge to pull. But what you need to do is put a lot of pressure against the plaster at this point, because you really need to flatten it out. Where the ripples, where there's any bumps, you don't just want to travel over them, you really want to push them into the wall and that way you're going to get a flat plaster. A lot of plasters, especially that's why flexes are so bad, flexes just follow the ridges, you really need to fight push into the plaster to make sure you're getting it flat, you're not just following it. So, pressure is key. And we're coming up, down. We also do the same left to right. Now this does take practice, but it's a great way to flatten your wall. And not only that, you'll never collect a lot of flat. So instead of pulling the plaster off the wall, you'll find that you're just keeping it in the wall and compressing it rather than taking it off. Another thing is a beginner plaster is fine, you'll take a lot of plaster off. What you really want to do is compressing the plaster into itself. You don't want to be removing it, you want to be just pushing it in and keeping what's on the wall. Especially if we're going over thick areas with our text and it's prone to a bit of bubbling, keep the plaster on. So push it in, don't pull it off. Now as we mentioned, it's very important to be pushing the plaster into the wall. And that's because that's what's going to get your walls flatter. Now, what you'll find as the later stages come on, the plaster's going to get thicker, it's going to get harder, so you'll strug struggle to do the constant trowel. But this is just a great way to get in flat walls faster, and if, it's worth trying if you're looking for something new. Another good rule of thumb is just keep your trowels clean. Like the edges, you can see the plaster collecting. Just feel it off as you go in. I'll just make sure... Just make sure that everything else after is nice, clean, flat and square because what you find is when your edges are overrun with plaster it'll run on either side of the wall, it'll just create a bit of a mess so as you go in, just clean up your trowels. One tool you should never lose and you should always keep safe it's these, this is the midget trowel and the reason is they take forever to break in so when you're using them just make sure you never lose them because this I've had for about six, seven years, still not fully broken in, but make sure you use them all the time when you can. And this is one tool you want to keep safe because you don't want to keep breaking these in. So get a decent one, I've got a Rafina one, very good. Get a decent one to start with, keep it forever. Big tip. This is the first proper trowel, just flattened the second coat roughly. You want to be using water now at this point, water at your edges. Keeping the trowel close to the wall. You don't want an open trowel, you're just going to pull the plaster off. Nice close trowel. You're still pushing into the wall. Pushing out. If you're pushing out, you're going to open the trowel, you want to push in. In means close trowel, in means you're going to keep the plaster to the wall and keep getting it flatter and flatter. It's not just about direction and how open your trowel is, it's about how hard you're pushing in. This means you're going to compress it and get it flatter and flatter into itself. So, and as I'm going, I'm just wetting the trowel as we go. I'm also wetting the skirting boards, trying to keep the skirting boards clean, keep them. Wet, wet them up at the bottom, and then eventually we'll clean it up. But for now, wetting the bottoms as well as the sides, trying to keep the skirting boards as clean as possible. 
Now as you can see we're really starting to push the plaster in now and you can actually see it's firming up but it's getting flatter and flatter the more you work do you do to it. But like I said the open trowel and that is a real important game changer here. If your trowel is too far open then you're just going to be pulling the plaster off but as the plaster starts to dry you do want to be opening the angle of your trowel up and that because it'll just get your help you to get it flatter and flatter but also a lot smoother. Now this is one of my pet bugs bugbears actually is working around sockets and light switches. And it can be so hard to get right so really take your time and make sure that everything around your sockets and light switches are nice and flat because these are what show and this is where people go to in the room when you're switching on and off. Another thing general housekeeping using the edge of your trowel cut back any excess plaster around your coving around your plug sockets. You really want to be keeping everything clean because plasterers even though it is our job to make the walls nice and flat you want to keep everything else crisp as well and angles external angles internal angles need to be clean need to be crisp because this is where the customers are going to look and to be honest a lot of the customers remember more about the cleanup than they do about the actual finish so keep your housekeeping good and keep everything clean as you go because this is so important last thing is coming to the very final part of plastering this is a carbon steel trowel and if you haven't got one, get one, they're amazing, they are really good. Really just help to smooth the plaster, there's no drag, there's no resistance. And what I've found towards the final stage, you don't need as much water. You're just literally putting a bit at the edges. So yeah, the carbon steel trowels, if you haven't really got one yet, to my opinion, they are an absolute game changer. And um, they really do make a difference on your finish. And in my opinion, I don't think I'd ever go back to stainless after using carbon again. I used to have one as a kid, but they are just so easy and they just glide over the plaster. So much nicer than the stain stainless steel trowel and you're just going to get a better finish. Now, I talked about here using less water. It doesn't matter if you're using more water, but what I'm finding is the less water I use when plastering, the more uniform the finish is. We're getting a more of a, it's trying to be a nicer colour and it's trying to all look the same. So if you are going to be using water, make sure it's clean water, clean fresh water. Um, again, it doesn't really matter, but dirty water can leave a bit of staining, a bit of scumminess behind. So use clean water when you're doing your wet trowel. And generally, we should be just... You can use more, it's not a big problem. I actually teach people to use more water in a wet trowel, but like I said, a good advantage of using a carbon steel trowel is it just kind of glides over the plaster, and you're not going to get that pull from the plaster. The carbon steel trowel is just really work well and they glide rather than fight for it so great bit of kit in my opinion give it a go they do need a bit more maintenance carbon steel trowels and you will might need to wd the edges uh, to keep stop it from rusting but generally i just give it a tap on my work pants job done that's all we're looking at now here's a cross trowel up close cross trowel is just a great way to flatten your wall and it gives a really nice finish so if you've not been using the flat uh, cross trowel yet with plastering, give it a go because they just it is just a great way to finish your walls. And if you're not plastering both ways, if you're not working horizontally and vertically, in my opinion, you're not going to get flat walls. I have seen plasterers who sometimes just go one way, just vertically. And to be honest, you're not you're not testing it. It might be right vertically, but it might not be right horizontally. So when you are doing it, just make sure you're working both ways. Another thing, we're really opening the trowel up at this point. If you have a look in a minute, you'll see the trowel. And it's really opened up. Can you see the angle on that now? Really opening up. And that's just going to make your plaster smoother and smoother. The reason I went over the top is when I'm looking sideways on, I've just seen a bit of discrepancy in the wall. And I wasn't too happy. So if you do that, don't be scared to go over your wall a few times. And finally, the finished trowel. This is a dry trowel. I always finish with plastic just amazing trowel for the finish leaves a real eggshell matte finish and again look at the angle of the trowel wide open that's just really going to smooth up the wall and give you a lovely finish but that is it that's a full guide on how to get perfect finishing plastering for beginners and anyone alike there's the finish all the walls done two coats done roughly two and a half to three hours with this system easy peasy Thank you for watching the video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and please subscribe here. For the 10 skills you need as a plasterer to get the perfect finish at all time and 10 skills you need to learn to really master the game of plastering, and just click this video here. This is a perfect example 
on the skills you need to be the pro pro plasterer. So click that, watch it, cheers.